let's look at a trickier example of factoring a difference of cubes. It's trickier because we don't see actual exponents of 3. We maybe see that our 8 is a cube 2 to the third power and there's 5 to the third power. We don't see exponents of 3, but if you think about when we were talking about difference of squares, we can use the difference of squares factoring strategy if the exponents were 2 or any even number. We use it on 6 and 10. So the idea about difference and sum of cubes is that either the exponent is a 3 or it's a multiple of 3. So we see some multiples of 3. We see exponent of 6 and 9. Multiples of 3 tell us that we can use the cube patterns. So we're setting up boxes. Doesn't matter what exponents we see here. If we decide that these are cubes, we are setting up boxes with exponents of 3. And we're really only setting up boxes with exponents that are either 2 or 3. 2 if they are squares or even exponents, and 3 if the exponents are 3 or any multiple of 3. Okay, so be cautious here. Let's think of the coefficient first. The number to the third power to equal 8 is 2 x with some exponent and again you can think about an exponent outside of parentheses gets multiplied in so the exponent we would need to see right here is 3 3 times 3 will give us that 9 okay there's our 5 for 5 to the third power equals 125 what's the exponent we need to see on y inside the box what number times 3 equals 6 so we need an exponent of 2 and that's how we're filling in the boxes when we have maybe a coefficient and, and maybe an exponent that's higher than 3. Just be cautious and deal with the coefficient first, the variable second, and know that it's these two exponents multiplied together need to equal the exponent that is in the problem. Once we have the boxes filled in, we are going to use the pattern. We have a difference, so here's our difference pattern with the signs, same sign, different sign, last one's a plus. So let's fill in these sets of parentheses. In our first box is our a, and in the second box is b. So first set of parentheses a minus b, it's going to be 2x to the third minus 5y squared. Second set of parentheses starts with a squared, and so our a is 2x to the third. This is a very common place to make an error to go off path a little bit. What you really need to think of this as this entire term 2x to the third, all of that gets squared. So I'm writing it this way to help me see that what I really need to write for this first term is 4x to the sixth. That I have x to the third squared to make the x to the sixth, but also that coefficient 2, it also needs to be squared. So it does need to be 4x to the sixth power I'll even find myself doing this sort of a move just to stay accurate. I still do this, so I write out a in parentheses with the exponent of 2 so I can be very clear and see that it's going to be, okay, 4x to the 6th. The next term we have after the plus, a times b. So we're doing 2x to the 3rd times 5y squared. If I write them out, it's helpful for me. I can see that this middle term needs to be 2 times 5, 10 with x third and y squared. 10x to the third y squared for the middle term. We'll have another plus, and then we finish with b squared. So 5y squared, this entire chunk, needs to get an exponent of 2. The 5 has to get an exponent of 2, and the y squared has to get an exponent of 2. Our third term in parentheses needs to be 25y to the fourth power. And there's our factored answer. There are lots of variables, lots of exponents going on in this problem, but we're able to use the same approach. Just go slow, be cautious with the coefficients and the exponents, and in, in particular we're, when we're filling in this last set of parentheses. It's easy to go off path when we're figuring out a squared and a times b and b squared when inside our, our boxes we have some more things going on than maybe just an x. So be, be careful and go slowly and these problems are doable. Just remember our main strategy, our, our general, general approach for these problems. Enough talk, here's an example for you to try. So put the video on pause, 
work this problem out and then come back and we'll look at the solution. Okay, I've set up boxes with exponents of 3. Inside the first box I needed 2x to the fifth. That's what we need to the third power will equal 8x to the fifteenth. In the second box it's a 3 to the third power for the 27 and y to the fourth to the third power would end up at y twelfth. So that's how, what we have in our boxes. We're going to go for the pattern in the first set of parentheses a minus b, 2x to the fifth minus 3y to the fourth. That's our first set of parentheses. Second set of parentheses, 4x to the tenth plus 6x to the fifth y to the fourth plus 9y to the eighth. And there is our answer in factored form. That's it for factoring binomials. Um, it, these problems are definitely doable, they just take practice. So make sure you're giving yourself an opportunity to practice enough problems that you're working at a good pace and that you're not doing any marathon sessions and studying for more than an hour at a time. Give yourself a break every 45 minutes and, and stand up and move around and do something else. And, and check your work. Make Check each of your answers to make sure that you're doing problems accurately. Make sure you're checking your work as you practice.